Salut coders, welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to show you how we can connect to MySQL database or Postgres database on our project uh, using Keyclock. So in this tutorial, as you can see right now, these are the tables which were created by Keyclock on MySQL database. So I will show you step by step how we can configure this. You can see here, it's showing these credentials and I created credentials using Keyclock and I was using this platform and right now, it's now storing this in my SQL database. So I will show you how to store your users who are going to use your application like from when you are registering using REST API or using this uh, portal. So, so for you to understand everything that I'm going to show you, you can complete watching this video. If you are new to this channel, make and least subscribe, click the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever we upload new video. So let's get started. If you haven't watched our previous tutorial, we set up our um, a key clock server where we added configurations for our key clock server and create a new client, new roles. And I showed you how we can use Postman to log in. So let's go to this project. This Spring Boot project is the one with the configuration of Spring Boot, Spring Boot dependency to key clock. So I have this Docker Composer. Uh, which I named Docker Composer YAML. So in this Docker Composer YAML is the one that we are going to use. So here in this Docker Composer file, we have MySQL, we have MySQL, and we have the key clock, key clock, that you key clock image and MySQL image, and all of them are services. So this MySQL, to download MySQL version 8.027, and with the user and with the MySQL user and password and the name of the database that you are going to use for the Keyclock is called Keyclock DB. And this is the MySQL root user password. So I will, I'm going to update these credentials. So just change your to the for, to have to be more secure, you can change these passwords. And in this uh, Keyclock one, in the environment variable, just say add your Keyclock user and password, and also add the vendor if it's MySQL or Postgres. But this one I'm using MySQL. So in the on the address, just say MySQL uh, K, MySQL KC, which is the name of this service. So this it will connect to this. This is going to be the data the address of your database. And the port 3306 is you know for MySQL. And this user and password are, are for this. These are the user and password for your MySQL. And the database must match this database that is being created here. And also set prox forwarding to true so that uh, we, we configure it with engine X so that you won't have issue of cause. So here we added these volumes which is my SQL volume and uh, the network. So this thing must be in same network with the, your, your key clock must be same network with the MySQL. And for the volumes, we want to save this, uh, like our data on our local file, which is valid MySQL on our server. So that when you restart your, uh, your server, you won't lose your data, like the data you stored. Let me show you on the server and you can configure this. And currently, if I run this, if I run this keyclock.codewithbeast.com, you can see the server is down. So let's now make it work. So in the previous tutorial, we, we, we created a Docker Composer. So let's go to the keyclock folder. And if I do nano, Hey, we have this docker composer file so this were the configs of our key clock on the previous tutorial but the problem with this is that when we restart the server we lose everything so we want to connect to a database where we have to store the users the clients the rooms the, all those things will be stored in the database for maybe for future use and we can back up our database and i will show you best it, a best way how to back up your database in future tutorials so we want to delete everything that is in here and copy what i added what i showed you on the spring project so let's delete everything so let's copy 
what is in here let's copy everything that is in here and let's paste it here so what i'm going to do is that i'm, I'm going to change the database name i'm going to change uh, the username of my database and i can say i can call it the user i can say code with bisque this is going to be our username and for the database for the password i will say admin it one two three four so for the root password So I have updated my passwords and uh, for for both my SQL and for Keyclock, the one that I'm going to use to log in on Keyclock. So after doing this, I have to save with this file with Control X. Then you say Y to save and press Enter. Right now, let's now start our Docker Composer. So the command to start Docker Composer is Docker Compose then up so you can see it's now pulling the image my sql image so let's let's wait for it to complete so right now it's now pulling the key clock image that you are going to use As you can see, the application is now running, so we would we want to test it. It's now initializing the database scheme for QClock, and it's using I think it's using Liquibase. So if you need more tutorials about Liquibase, how you can version your, your database, you can just let me know uh, in the comment section, and I can prepare a tutorial for that. So now the application is up and running. So let's now run. Previously, our service was down. So let's run. Let's run this. And you can see the application is now running. And we are using MySQL database. So if I click the administration, it will go to the login page where I have to enter my username and password. And yet, this is my password. And I managed to log in. So here you can see on previous tutorial, we created a room. But on that room, uh, we it was deleted because we were not storing that in the database. That's why I decided to have a database. So let's create a new room just for testing. And this one, I can call it Spring Integrations. This room, and I will create it. And I will just create it. We managed to create a, this room, Spring Boot Code. So after doing this, we can create a new user, or we can create a new row let's just create a user and you, you can add a user and you want to see that user in our database and username i will say bisque and email code with bisque gmail.com code password with bisque and email verified let's make it to true and let's save this so in our credentials let's add a credential and add this then i'll set the password yes so this user will be able to log in and the user is bisc and we can create another client so on future tutorials i will show you how we can create this user using rest api which is the next tutorial after this one so here i want to create a a, a new client 
and this is also going to be our client and then click save so here we have created our client so i want to stop this service or, or i want to show you this user in our mysql database called this user uh, bisk if i save you all users i want to show you this user in our database so so what i can say i can say docker ps to list all the docker images that are running and we have this docker which is running code key clock this one kc so if you want to connect to this we want to use this name to connect to this docker image so to connect to that docker image docker execute minus t minus it i think so it then space then the name of our image the name of the image then we say mysql and the name of the user and it was called with bisk in the password then you press enter sorry it's underscore one yeah it's i i missed this it's underscore one here. underscore one then you press enter then you enter the password of your database now i'm connected to the database then i can say show databases then this is our database for our key clock and then i say use this database and then i say show tables so we want to check if we if we our if we have a, the user bisk in our user entity table so i will just say select all from user entity you can see this is the user bisk as you can see and this is the admin that i'm using to log in so this is for for the admin user and this is the user that we created so this database if we, we created groups we also created a client so just say select go from clients so this is the client that we create you will see the client that we created there are so many clients but I, we created another client this one which is authentication client id so this is how you can see your your data even the credentials is there show tables let's look for the let's look for the credential where passwords are being stored this one this is the name of the table so you just say select go from i think we have two records right now so we have two records right now in the other one if this is the for the first user and this one is for the second user so one of them is for admin and the other one is for bisk so if you like what you saw and what you learned may you kindly like this video show add comments uh, share the video if you are new to this channel may you kindly subscribe click the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever you upload new video let's meet on another next video where we are going to use admin api api rest api to create a user not using the con not using the web application salu coders